I believe in going back to the real spiritual meaning of Christmas. What is the real spiritual meaning of Christmas? Do you think that Jesus or religion is the source of Christmas? I'm going to say the exact opposite. That religion is not the source of Christmas, but its enemy. Now you say, how can Peacock say such a thing? Well, I'm going to bring in some facts, though, so that might cut down some of the bromides that we hear everywhere. Is materialism the enemy of Christmas? Or is religion the enemy of Christmas? Of course, everybody in the newspaper says materialism, gift-giving, physical objects, commercialism, profit is ruining Christmas. Let's just start with a simple fact. Christmas, as we celebrate it now, is a 19th century American invention. And it has been observed in the United States only for the last, say, 150 years. So if you want to understand Christmas, you have to ask yourself, why is it an American invention and why is it so recent? Now, of course, in one sense, you know, human beings have celebrated the winter solstice back into prehistory because that's the period in December where the days lengthen, darkness is retreating, it indicates the earth is returning to life, and people are happy. The ancient Romans celebrated this very period from about December 17th to January 1st as the festival of Saturnalia. They feasted, they reveled, they enjoyed themselves. What did the early Christians in the 1st, 2nd century A.D., what was their attitude toward the revels, the happiness, and so on during the December period? They ignored these Roman celebrations. They knew perfectly well that December was not the month of Jesus' birth, and in any case, they regarded birthday celebrations as a heathen custom. You weren't supposed to celebrate your birth in this life. You were supposed to wait for the next life, for the end of the world, for the second coming. So the early Christians had only scorn for this kind of celebration and earthly uh, pleasures. And they were being very biblical. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth it shall gain it unto life eternal. Now, these Romans obviously were loving their life, and the Christians scorned them. They did everything they could, but they could not stamp out the Saturnalia, the Feast of the Romans in December. By the 4th century AD, the Romans were worshipping the God of the Sun on December 25th, and the Christians came to a decision. And it is very simple. If you can't stop them, join them. They proceeded to claim, knowing perfectly well that this was not the truth, they proceeded to claim that December 25th was Jesus' birthday too, and that the solstice holiday now belonged to the church. This is after 350 years of fighting the holiday. They finally decided to take it over. Even so, you could, would find it hard to guess how long it took for even the word Christmas to be coined. It was coined about 1050, another 700 years later. And it was observed in Europe only since about 1200. In the U.S., Christmas wasn't even a federal holiday until 1870. Now, why did Christmas develop so slowly? Because the Christians, even after they took it over, were extremely ambivalent about it. On the one hand, it was inherently a heathen pro-life festival, the festival of earthly renewal. It demanded, therefore, earthly concern and earthly pleasure from men. And on the other hand, the Christians rejected all of this. They preached renunciation, sacrifice, the 
coming into the world, the importance of the afterlife. Don't go around reveling, they said. Emulate Jesus who came here to suffer and die. So the Christians were in this tremendous predicament. They took over a pagan holiday of worldly enjoyment and tried to make it a red-letter day for an otherworldly religion. And that's what has been tearing Christians apart about Christmas for centuries. 